A reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that reading very much. And welcome to those of you that are joining us here this morning. You're either on uh, WBCI 105.9 FM uh, listening to us over the radio, or you may be also uh, viewing us through our website, which is available now. You can pick us up uh, and watch us. Uh, just go to ubctopsum.org and uh, click on the online sermon link there, and uh, you can catch us there also. But welcome as we continue to try to do what we can with the circumstances as they uh, uh, have, have engulfed us with this coronavirus and uh, those things that uh, the government is asking us to do. And, and uh, uh, so just thanks for being with us here today. When friends come and visit us, when they come to visit Deb and I here in Maine, we like to show off the natural beauty of Maine. One of the best values that we ever have made, one of the best purchases we made, was a, an annual pass to Acadia National Park. I cannot tell you how many times we have been up to Acadia taking friends and, and neighbors and, and everything, and on a per-visit basis, we have made a wonderful purchase. <laughs> and, and so, but we love to be able to take folks up and, and show them the sights and, and the stuff here in Maine. Uh, there's the iconic Maine things that we have around here. We, we go out to Portland Head, Headlight. We uh, take them over to Pemaquid. We take them down to Moody's to have breakfast and, and uh, all of those things. And, and then there's the local stops also. We've got, uh, you know, we've got L.L. L. Bean just down the road. We've got Builder's Choice ice cream, and we've got ice cream parlors all around. We've got Gelato Fiasco, Wolf's Neck, and Land's End, and the list just keeps growing as we keep finding places that we love to, to explore and do things and, and show off to our visitors to Maine. Just this last fall, we were taking a couple out on a, on a, a small hike, uh, we were down on Bailey Island, and uh, we were going down to the Giant Stairs. Those of you that have been down there, you, you know it's, it's a wonderful place and, and so, such great scenery, and, and to see the ocean out there. And, and as you walk down the path, the Giant Stairs is about midway down the path, and, and so we like to keep going. We, we don't just go down to the Giant Stairs and come back. No, we, we keep going on down the path. And at this particular time, as we were going down the path, there, along the way, there's the cottages there that look out onto the ocean. And we noticed on one of those cottages, there was a flag. The American flag was flying, except it was upside down. It was upside down. Now, I don't know if the folks there at the cottage got up that morning and, and raised the flag and accidentally put it upside down or not. Or maybe they were making a political statement because we know that an upside down flag is the international sign for distress, for distress. And many would tell us that our lives are a series of distresses, aren't they? From one distress to another, one emergency replaced by another. We've got pain and suffering lining up, just waiting to take their turn as, they, as we move through this life. And that's, that's just part of being human, right? There's so much that affects our lives that we have absolutely no control over. Oh, we do what we can. We do what we can. We react to each situation as best we know how, as, as best as we can. And, 
And just about the time we think that things are going our way, just about the time we think that we're making progress, the next crisis hits, pulls the rug right out from under us, and we find ourselves back trying to get up on our feet again, time and time again. <laughs> Please let me assure you here and now that it doesn't have to be this way. There is a better way. Let us pray together. Father, I do thank you again for this glorious day. It's glorious, Lord, not because the weather is good or the weather's bad. It's glorious because you are with us each and every moment of this day. Father, continue to speak to our hearts and minds. Continue to be with us and strengthen us and encourage us, Lord, as we go through our lives. Father, I thank you for this time that we have set aside on purpose to come to you and to hear from your word. Lord, these are not my words. They're not the words of Pastor Jim. No, they are the words that you have given us. Lord, speak to each and every one of us through these words. Speak a message that may be as unique as the number of people that hear it, Lord. But it's your message. And we are listening for you. Gracious God, I just pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our joke this morning goes this way. It says, so far today, God, I've done all right. I haven't gossiped. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't been selfish, grumpy, nasty, or overindulgent. I'm really glad about that, but in a few minutes here, God, I'm going to get out of bed, and from then on, I'm probably going to need a lot more help. <laughs> oh, we've been working our way through a 40-day devotional this, this Lenten season. It has taken us uh, through some of the sayings of Jesus as he was on the cross. Now, the Lenten season is that time of preparation, how we pre prepare our hearts for the upcoming celebration of Jesus rising from the dead. You see, that first Easter morning, Jesus victori victoriously conquered sin and death and rose again out of that grave. And this devotion has helped us get prepared for that. that. The first week, we studied where Jesus was on the cross, and he said, Father, forgive them. We looked at forgiveness. The next week, we, we saw how Jesus turned to the thief on his side and said, today you will be with me in paradise. And we looked at salvation. The next week, we saw how Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we learned that Jesus had to have been forsaken so that you and I don't have to be. Last week, we took a look at compassion, how Jesus continues to show compassion on each and every one of us. And he displayed that compassion as he was there on the cross and he looked down upon his mother and he said, woman, Behold your son, as he was taking care of his mother, even in the midst of his situation, he was looking out for someone else. And here in week five of our Lenten season, we are looking at the verse that says, I thirst. Jesus said, I thirst. We are talking here about distress. And here we get another verification of Jesus' own humanity. Yes, he was God incarnate. Incarnate, now that's a big $10 word, isn't it? Ah, Incarnate means that Jesus was fully God and fully man in the flesh. 
Jesus was not some kind of ghost or spirit. He wasn't a figment of someone's imagination. John 1.14 tells us, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. So we would think that this flesh that's fully God and fully man would have been special, right? But Isaiah tells us, 53.2, He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to Him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. So we are told that Jesus probably wasn't incredibly handsome. He wouldn't be the one that would stick out in a crowd. He was human. There was nothing in his appearance. And yet, people were drawn to him. They were drawn to him. Why? And I might suggest that Jesus had a way to let people know that he actually cared for them. We remember the world in Jesus' day. The Romans had control. They were large and they were in charge. And they didn't have a problem with displaying that they were in charge. And the people on the street, the average Joe, would look around and, and they, were, they were abused. They felt used. They, they, they felt like they were being oppressed by the Roman government. And then they would look at their religious leaders. Not much better. Not much better. Even they had their temple guard to maintain and reinforce the strict adherence to their rules and regulations. Every direction these folks would turn to seemed to lead to a dead end. So when Jesus came onto the scene, he had a different message. His message was of love, of mercy, and of grace. It was so different from what they were hearing from anywhere else. And people wanted to hear more. They wanted to see more. <sighs> the news of Jesus' miracles traveled like wildfire. The lame walked, the blind could see, the deaf could hear. Demons were scattered. The dead was brought back to life. People came from across the world to catch a glimpse and to hear this message that was so different than anything else. Jesus' message was not one of hate, but of love. It was not one of force, but of mercy. It was not a message of guilt, but of grace. Jesus' message was of a personal God that loves everyone, not a God that was looking to punish when, when we do the slightest thing wrong. And Jesus not only spoke of this love, mercy, and grace, he lived them out each and every day. People witnessed what Jesus was doing, and that is what drew people to him. And the message of Jesus is the same today. It applies today just as it did back then. Too often, I hear of folks trying to describe God. And their description kind of goes something along the lines of God is this old, long-haired man with a long, white beard sitting up in the clouds above us somewhere with a big hammer in his hand. <laughs> a big hammer and this scowl on his face, just waiting for one of us to goof up, just waiting for one of us to, to make a mistake. And when it does, he gets this big smile on his face and he whacks them with that hammer. Oh, my goodness. Let me assure you this day that there is nothing further from the truth. We realize that God loves us. He wants the very best for us. He even provided the way for us to return to him. We remember when man was created, Adam and Eve, they were created for fellowship 
with God, that personal relationship. They would walk in the garden with God. They would walk and talk with him. Adam and Eve put a division between them and God when they were disobedient. And in their hearts, they wanted to be like God. And so we remember as they took the fruit from the tree, that outside evidence of what had already happened on the inside, sin was created. And that was that division between man and God. But God has bridged the gap. He loves us so much that he has provided the way to get back to him. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15 say, it says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of, of death. Jesus left the realms of glory, the realms of heaven to come to earth to save us from our sin, to make a way available for us to return to God. Jesus loves us that much. That love is unconditional. That love isn't based on anything that we can do or say. He loves us just the way we are. And he wants the best for us. He doesn't want us to stay in that sin situation. He wants us to return to him. How much does he love us? Romans 8, 35 and 37 say, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. More than conquerors for those of us that love him. Even today, in the middle of our trials, we can turn to Jesus for our comfort and our strength. The scripture that Chris read for us just a moment ago gives us the answer. Because he died for us, for you and for me. Makes a change in our lives. And it can also make a change in the word of our theme for this week, distress. You see, Jesus can take the I out of distress and replace it with an E. To change the word from distress to de-stress. As he walks with us through all of our life's trials, we need not to stress about what we need to do, but we need to rely on him and him alone. He will see us through. He will be with us each and every step of the way, closer than a brother, closer than a friend. He loves you with his entire being, for he is love. And with that love with us, we not, need not be worried, stressed. With him, we can be de-stressed. Let us pray. Father, again, I thank you for your message to us here today. Father, continue to speak to us. Continue your presence with us. Father, help us in these difficult times to remember that you are Lord and Savior. To remember that we look to you for these things. We don't look to the government. We don't look to a school system. We don't look to man-made things, but we look to you and you alone. Continue to be with us, Father. We thank you for your very presence, and we thank you for the promise that you will never leave us. You will never forsake us, even to the end of the age. 
We praise you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen.